Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly J Jewelry. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cute little pendant. I've put a list in the description below of everything you'll need to make this pendant. I'm using square wire today and half round and weaving wire. If you want to use round wire, that's absolutely fine. Where you could use the half round, you can use your weaving wire on there. So you can use any wire you like, but I've used square because I think it looks pretty on this one, how it sits across the top. Also in the description below, you'll find links to my Etsy shop, and my Facebook page and my Instagram. To make this pendant, you'll need square wire, half round wire and weaving wire. So I'm using 21 gauge square wire, which is 0.71 millimeter and 21 gauge again, 0.71 millimeter of the half round wire. And I'm using power wire today. And my weaving wire is 28 gauge, which is uh, 0.315 millimeter and I've wound that onto a bobbin. If you don't have a bobbin, don't worry, you can just cut lengths as you go. Um I've put I'll put a link in the description below for where I buy my little bobbins from. They're quite handy. So I've cut 12 inches of the square wire, which is about 31 centimeters, and I've cut three lengths and the half round wire I've cut one length at five inches, which is 13 centimetres. And for the weaving wire, you probably need about 200 centimetres. I've got a small teardrop cabochon. A moonstone one. This is quite small. If you want to use a larger one, you can for this design. Just remember to use longer wire lengths. This little stone is... About 15 millimetres by 10 millimetres. Tools, I've got my wire cutters, round nose pliers, um, my tweezer nose pliers, nylon pliers. If you don't have nylon pliers, don't worry, because you can just straighten the wire with your fingers, but I love to use these. I've put links to where I buy my tools from in the descriptions below if you just want to have a look at the tools that I'm using. So starting roughly in the middle of your wires, take all three square wires and then take your half round wire and you want the flat side against the wire. And we're just going to begin wrapping around the wire. I'm going to pull it quite tight but not enough to pull the wires together too much. So keeping the flat side always against the wire we want about six wraps going to flatten that down with my pliers and then I'm pulling it away a little bit from the back and I'm going to cut it so that it finishes behind the wires and this side too so we can't see that end from the front I'm just going to squeeze those ends down so it's all secure. So we've got roughly six wraps. So you want to grab half with your pliers. And we're going to bend it. And this is to make the V to go against the bottom of the stone. So 
we need that B, that V to be the angle of the bottom of the stone. And then holding the stone in place, we're going to gently bend the wires around the stone. Try not to let them cross over each other. So we end up with this shape. And where the wires cross at the top, you just need to bend those out. So I'm bending them a little bit with my fingers first so we can see where we need them to be. And then I'm going to bend them a little bit more. So we've got this shape in our wires. So take your weaving wire and we'll wrap three times around one of the back wires just to attach the wire. Push it up into place where all the wires meet and holding them all securely in place going to wrap around the whole thing about five times and then we'll go three times around that bottom wire again at the back So now we've got it secured at the top. Cut off that tail end. A rainy day but the birds are singing today. sure it's not twisted and you want to make sure as well that all your wires are sat next to each other and that they haven't crossed over each other on the sides now we're going to add our stone and before we do that just pull your wires apart a little bit on the sides it just makes it a bit easier in the next step just put a little space between them Now pushing your stone down to the bottom and start with the back. So your stone's going to keep moving around so this is going to be a little bit fiddly. Because we've already pulled the wires apart it's a bit easier to grab those back wires now. So holding your stone in place and you've got to try and keep it as far down to the bottom as you can. Take your pliers. And we're going to grab the wire. I'm starting at the back. So we grab the wire that's furthest to the back. And we're just going to bend the one wire. And we want to pull it over the stone. Just 
so it holds the stone in. And as I bent it in, I held it in position with my thumb so that the top of the wire didn't move much. We do that for the other side as well. So grab the wire that's at the back. Close to the bottom as you can. Gotta make sure you don't grab two wires. That's my dog snoring. Bend that one in. Again, holding it in position with your thumb there so that the top of the wires just stay where they are. That'll stop the stone from coming out of the back. And we're going to do a similar thing at the front. <laughs> she's snoring, she's happy. So we pull these wires forward now. Now we've got the front face in. Again, make sure you've pushed your stone down to the bottom. Take your pliers. I'm going to grab in the front wire at the bottom. Oops. We're going to bend that wire. But now we're kind of bending it up and in rather than across the back like we did before. It's the same angle, but we're bending it up to hold the stone in place. Do the same for the other side. Holding it in about the same place. Bend it up. Holding it in place with your thumb here. So it keeps the, all the wires at the top are nice and wide apart. If you don't hold them, it'll pull the whole wire over. So the wires are all still apart at the top. But the bottom here where I've bent them up, that holds the stone nicely in place. Give it a little squeeze there. Just so it's all nice and tight around the stone. So now for the next part, we're going to weave the bale. As your wires sit, we should have front wires and back wires. So the front wires, we're going to pull those forward out of the way for now. I'm just going to bend them down out of the way and this one. So I've bent both the front wires out of the way for now, which leaves us with four back wires. You want to pull those to be quite flat. So whichever way they lie best to get them nice and flat and we're going to weave a bale across those. So you want to position them so they're going out into a nice v-shape ignoring the two at the front that are coming down the front we're just working on the four at the back so position them into a v-shape like this so we've got two on one side and two on the other so now working across these four wires we're going to bring our weaving wire up between those bottom two And we'll go around the second wire. So we've gone over the second wire, under the bottom wire, over the top and up between and over the top. So what we've done is we've gone around the middle wire, around both wires, and then we've gone back around that middle wire. We're going to do the same on the other side. So we go over and around. I'm going to call it the middle wire. The two middle wires are my middle wires. The two outer wires are my outer wires. So I've gone around the third one, which is my middle wire. Over the top. So now I've gone around both of the top wires. And then I'll go back around my top middle wire. 
hope that makes sense. So what we're going to do, again on the bottom, we go around the middle wire, around both wires, around that middle wire, over the middle wire on the top, around both the, the top wires and around the middle wire again. So we'll keep repeating this and I'm going to say it in a slightly different way just in case you don't understand what I'm saying. So we come over the second wire. One, two, three, four. We've gone over the second wire. Come all the way around that second wire. Over and under that first wire. Back up and over that second wire, and we've gone between the first and the second. Then we come back up and we go over the third wire. And around it, over the fourth wire. And then back underneath that third wire and around it. And then back over the second wire. So these middle two wires, your wire is always going over to the other side and then back over to this side. And then as soon as you're on a side, you go around the middle wire, around both of the wires, and then around that middle wire. I do hope that makes sense, but that's what it looks like. We're going to keep repeating that a little further and try not to pull your wires together as you go in. So I've done about one and a half centimetres of that weave. So now I'm going to shape the wires again, so holding firmly onto the wire where it reaches at the top of the weave and you must keep pressing your weave together to compress that weave to keep it nice and tidy. So holding the wire here, I'm going to bend it in like that and on this side. So we've got roughly a, a diamond shape going on. When you're happy with the shape, and I'm going to shape at the top as well. So hold it at the top and bend it back out. You have to pinch it quite firmly. And then we'll pinch in it again, separate out those outer wires so it's easier just to carry on weaving. And then we're going to carry on with this weave right up to the neck of it here. And as you go, it's going to keep sliding, it's going to keep wanting to slide along the wires. So you're going to have to keep holding it down on each side as you go. And this is where it gets a bit fiddly. So I'm holding it down on this side. And I'm going over and around that middle wire on the other side. around both of the wires and over and around that middle wire and keep pushing it down 
and then holding it down again I come over to the middle wire on this side and then around both wires and then around the middle one again and keep pushing it down so you're keeping it tidy and just keep holding it down on the sides as you go So my weave has now reached the top of that shape and you'll always have little gaps because it is hard to get it tidy on this top part but this top part will also be the back so it won't be seen that much. So now we need to shape the bale and I'm going to use a paintbrush, you can use anything you like. If you've got bale pliers then that's fantastic or you could use a pen and across this part where it's at its widest point you're going to bend the bale over so we end up with this shape take those back wires and I'm going to bend them back just a little bit just so we can get the shape nice and tight at the back the wires nice and close bend it forward a little bit so that's how a bale at the top where your chain or your cord will go through so we've got two wires on one side and two wires on the other. That's my dog making all that noise. So now we're going to take the weaving wire and we're going to go around the entire thing to hold it all nice in place. So take your wire over the back as soon as everything is close together and you're happy that it's all nice and tidy. I'm going to wrap around the whole thing. They need to go either above our previous wraps that are already there or below. So I'm going to do two, three above. Then I'm going to bring it across the back and I'm going to do a few wraps below. And then take one of the back outer wires and wrap your weaving wire around that and pull it firmly to secure your weaving wire. So now we've got two wires on one side and two wires on the other and we've got our two front wires still. We don't need this weaving wire anymore. So I'm going to start with these two front wires. I'm going to take the one on the right and I'm going to put a curve in it so it curves across the front like that. Holding it in place, the second wire, curve around follow it and I'm going to hold it here I'm going to scoop it around the other way and 
And I'm now going to cut these wires short and bend them over the bale. Squeeze them into place. Run it about that long. On the other one. Take my pliers and holding the wires in place where they go over the edge, I'm going to bend them around the bail. Gently squeeze it into place because with silver you'll mark it if you're too rough with it. And again with this one. Make sure it's where I want it. Hold it in place. Bend it over and around the bale. And then gently squeeze it so it's tight around that edge. Next we're going to take these two wires on the right Bending them together Bringing them around And across the front of the piece Now I need to make sure That the flat side facing forward because square wire does tend to twist. And we're going to scoop it around and pull the bottom one down and the top one goes around so it finishes about there. So we're sort of in the middle of the top wire there and this wire here. So it's kind of in the middle. And we want to do to this one what we did to these. So holding it in place, I'm going to cut it about there. And I'm going to carefully bend it without moving it too much around the bale and then gently oops squeeze it in place and this wire I'm going to curl around so we want a nice big curl on that one. So I'm going to cut that one about there. And with round nose pliers, I'm going to take the end, the very tip, start curling on the tip first. And you want a nice curl. pushing it all against the piece. I've got a little swirl in the middle there. And then these final two wires, making sure that they're flat. So just sat next to each other and they're not twisted. Bring 
bring them around to the front together and then I want to scoop them around Go right around to the back. We want them to go across the back, a little bit above the stone, next to each other, going across the piece like that. So now I'm going to cut these wires quite short and bend them over as we did for the wires earlier. Now when I'm working with wire, I like to have quite a bit of length on the end to be able to handle the wires. So it might seem like I'm cutting off a lot of wire, but I like to have that handling length on the wire. If you start with shorter wires, and you can if you want to cut off less, it's a little bit more tricky to shape them towards the end because you've got less to hang on to. But it's entirely up to you. You can use shorter wires if you think I'm cutting off too much. So then I'm going to take these two wires, holding it all in place because I don't want to misshape the front. I'm going to carefully bend both of these wires over The wires to the side there and then squeeze them down like that so there we have it finished I hope you managed to follow me okay on that one. So all you need to do now is pop your chain or your cord through the vial at the top there. And you've got yourself a pretty little pendant. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.